What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're gonna be talking about list in C Sharp. Um, lists are gonna be the most common data structure that you see probably in your whole entire like career. Like honestly, I'd say for every 100 lines of code, there's gonna be a list in there somewhere and you use lists so common because lists are super powerful. There's all, there's all types of connotations between a list and a linked list. And a list and a linked list aren't um, similar in any way. A list is actually more closely related to an array. It's like a really souped up array with more extension methods attached to it. So when you make an array, there's all different types of methods and extensions that you can use in C Sharp to manipulate or uh, list. You, it, you're manipulating lists, you're not manipulating arrays. I'm sorry, I misspoke that. But there's all different types of extensions, and all different types of ways that you can, that's built into C Sharp to manipulate lists and you definitely want those extensions. So first thing that we've done, actually was looking at here earlier, trying to <laughs> make a class. All right, go through here, go to new item. If you didn't see that, go add new item then name it part and it's literally just going to be like a part to like a car or something it's just going to be some like anonymous part also if you want i'm doing this from microsoft's documentation of what a list is so we're going straight through the source and gonna be tr a lot of this we don't really even need i'm going to be trimming a lot of this out but i'm also going to just kind of go through step by step and just explain to you you know what everything is so because a list is kind of confusing if you've never if you've never used it before. But if you want to just have this code beforehand, you know where to go. So, first things first, we're actually going to create our own object. One thing is that if you want to declare a list, um, you can actually just put integers in it. But another reason that people use lists a lot and lists have kind of just pretty much killed arrays. It's really sounds bad saying that, but they pretty much have. Um, the int right here is type checking. So this is basically you saying, hey, we're, I'm going to have a list of integers and if you try to put anything else in here, I'm gonna, the compiler is gonna throw an error. So just put, think of it like that. And it also just gives you like a handy way to know what's in your list. So if you ever see that, just think of it as like almost a label that says, hey, this is just what this is. It's literally just almost like a label. The next thing is you have this new part right here. If you don't know what new is, is that means when you create this data type, because it's a reference type, you have to use a new uh, keyword because in this, in C Sharp, but if you come from JavaScript, you have to be a little bit more low level than JavaScript, like Python and JavaScript are so abstracted that you don't have to even do these things. But C Sharp, you're gonna have to use this word called new because you're creating a new object, you're instantiating it, and you're putting it on the stack. So bigger data types in C Sharp require you to new up things while smaller things, like just variables, a lot of times they can just be stored on the stack. So. Hopefully that didn't confuse you there. Or hopefully that uh, cleared things up a little bit for you. So we've already, this is just, we've just randomly created this, but we need to go back to our part and we need to go ahead because we're going to put our part inside of here. So that really the beauty and the power of a list isn't just putting ints in there. That's like slapping God in the face. Like you need to, fully utilize these you know, lists to their fullest, extent, fullest potential and what better way than to create our own custom data types. Whew, doesn't that sound powerful? So much power, <laughs> what are you gonna do? All right, so go through here. Then we create our first property. We're going to, so this is going to be a string. Then this is going to be the part name. Then we go down here, we're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be an int, it's gonna be a part ID. So we just created a class. Think of this is, like I said, we're making our own like little custom uh, factory of data. So we're creating our own like little type and we're going to put it into our list. 
it's almost like th uh, think of it like this we're building like I said our own object right like slowly just kind of you know we're defining like what, what's in our own object and we're going to put it into our list so we can't we actually have to come in here like I said I'm gonna put our part object right here and we have to bring it in we can't just the computer just doesn't know you actually have to tell the computer to bring this part into there and in order to do that you hit control you hit uh, dot and voila we now have our part in here so we actually haven't added anything to it so we actually need to add stuff to our parts and or uh, in this case we've named it list so other thing is that this is uh, what has we've created like I said we've just created our object we've or almost like a chisel we've almost like created our own objects now we're going to add parts to it now we're going to add our own like little custom objects to it Let's see Headlight, and we will name this part ID. For some reason, I'm not getting IntelliSense. Oh, here we go. Is equal to one, and oh, sorry. First one. Next one will be easier. We can actually just copy, let's just copy this down. That was painful. <laughs> okay. Then let's change it to bumper. Then let's change this one to two. So let's just go ahead and instead of iterating through it, we can just take a look inside of it. This is the, this is the lazy man's iteration. <laughs> this is terrible. But it's honestly, it's true. Okay, lazy man's iteration. We're going to just go through the, with the debugger here. So look, go through, look into here, look at this part right here, just hover over it and take a look because you can, you can actually see the data and you'll see your data in there. That's a good, that's like a really useful way to visualize data. But for learning purposes, we also are gonna have to iterate through it because there's, this is a very important point is that whatever you have a list of objects or whenever you have a list of arrays, you have to iterate through it. If you try to just toss this, let me just show you like what will happen. This is a major pitfall for a lot of programmers. If you just take that and you just toss it in there, watch what happens. It's just It just looks like gobbledygook. Wait a second, I'm gonna have to get it to execute. Yeah, this is what it looks like. If you just toss that in there and you don't actually try to iterate through it and you try to iterate through a con iterate uh, a list like that, or you don't iterate, um, that's what it's gonna look like. So if you ever see that, that means that you, you need to iterate through this actual list. So we will go through just like a quick, nice little iteration. So very simply, we're just gonna take a shortcut. Many times people will say, you know, you need to formally learn how to do just like a regular for loop. But a nice little trick is, and I, you see this in production, is you just call it a for each and you don't have to go through all the variable naming and all that other stuff. You can just literally just take your part or, you know, object right here. Um, we'll just name it part in LST. So we call that one LST. Then we go down here and then we will console right line. Yep. Part. And we will see how this actually um, let's just go ahead and actually iterate through it. I think that's a I think that's a really good idea. So uh, not iterate, go through it with a debugger, I'm sorry. 
So we went through, declared it. Look in, if you look in there, another key important point, when you create objects, it looks like this. It just looks, it's actually just the name or it's the actual property. And what that is, is it's pointing to another, it's pointing to the heap. So you have to actually bring this, you have to bring this drop down right here because it has to go to the heap to actually get that. So go down and then we actually start iterating. What it's gonna do is it's taking our list right here. We've added two things to it. We put it down here in the for each and then for each part, it goes through, it's gonna go one, two, and then it's gonna display the parts. Okay, let's go ahead. So each one has been iterated through, but it also just kind of looks wonky. So why does it look like that? It looks like that because you need to actually go through your IntelliSense and either choose which part name that you want. So you would have to go into this because remember we made it, we actually made our own object and then go through there, give it a string, get uh, use that extension method, method right there just for good measure. It probably won't actually It'll still probably print to the console, but I would just do it for extra measure just in case. So go down through here, and then we need to actually go to our part ID. And that one definitely is going to need a two string because that's an, that's an integer. I think the string will just display, but once again, we'll just make sure that they both are turned into strings. Yep. There we go. And it iterates through each one of them and displays them onto the uh, console. And lastly, um, if you are interested in more content, some people have asked for bonus materials. I actually found a really good um, Code Academy course, Code Academy course on C Sharp. And I will link that down in the description if you want to follow that because it will actually be like a quiz and I don't get any money for this either. Like, so I'm not like out here shilling. So yeah, you have to actually take a quiz and it's also kind of more interactive than a YouTube video as well too. But anyway, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.